Hey everyone, topic for this video is Saga, which is very important database pattern when it comes to maintaining the transaction and data consistency across microservices. We are going to understand what is this all about, what are the use cases, when this pattern is applicable and how we can apply it in our architecture. Right? So let's go ahead and get started. Before looking into the Saga pattern, let's understand the problem statement what problem it is trying to solve. So this is the services, history service, mailing services, analytic service that I have taken as an example, which I will be showing you uh, in, throughout the video. Under Saga, we are going to understand the transaction and data consistency. So let's cover few points about transaction. So transaction is a single unit of logic or work and it is spread across multiple services in distributed system. When we have monolithic application, so that transaction is it's centralized into that application. But when we have microservices architecture, that set of steps uh, that needs to be maintained and that's, uh, that needs to be considered a one unit, a one unit of work uh, that is spread across microservices. So the meaning of the transaction in monolithic and microservices architecture differs in a slight way that uh, it doesn't mean transaction that it belongs to a single service, but in microservices, it it is spread across microservices. So when it comes to transaction, there are certain properties that must be maintained. First is atomic means atomicity of the task that you are doing. It should be consistent throughout. It should be isolated uh, means it should not be disturbed by other concurrent operations that you are doing and durable means when it is committed, it should be, it should be persistent in the database. Uh, even if the there is some failure after committing, if even if there is some failure in the system or is there is an error, any error, that should not affect the data. That should be durable. So these are the properties of the transaction that must be maintained, whether it is a monolithic application or microservices architecture. So when when we have uh, we have to maintain transaction within a monolithic application that is easy to maintain those. AC properties, but when we are talking about cross services architecture, we cannot go with the same strategy that we were following in the monolithic architecture. So we have to think in microservices architecture and we have to come up with some different strategy. Uh, for example, if I talk about I want to maintain a task which is spreading through all of these services, history service, mailing service and analysis service. To contact these services, I have to send a request to other system and wait for the response from there to come and then proceed further. So there are some challenges that comes when we have to maintain the data consistency across microservices and we have to come up with a new thinking, new strategy. And in, in, those, in those patterns, in those thinking, Saga is one of that. Saga is one of that patterns which provides data consistency and transaction across microservices. Let's cover few points. What is this Saga all about? So it's a way to manage data consistency across microservices in distributed transaction scenarios. It's a sequence of transactions that updates each service and publishes a message or event to trigger the next transaction. Let me explain to you like if I have three services S1, S2 and S3 and the task has started from this S1 so it does its part of the work and it transmits a message to other service to do the second part of the transaction and subsequently S2 performs its action and subsequently it triggers an event or passes a message to next service that is in the queue to perform its action. In this way, entire transaction is completed. And if any of the step and the third is if it is possible that when first service has completed its task and it has asked the service to complete its task but there are some there are, there are some cases that s2 fails to perform that task in that case s2 is emitting an event or emitting a message not for s3 but s1 to roll back the task that it has done to it has done previously right so if we are seeing the transaction right so in transaction these these three services are involved so that task has to be completed by all of these services or if there is any problem at any service so whatever task was done by the previous service that has to be reverted so s2 emits that event to revert that one so this is how it works the saga pattern 
it will be more clear when we will see we will understand this in diagram in subsequent slides uh, moving ahead and see the few more points about saga so it is a sequence of transaction sequence of local transaction so it will be more clear with this diagram so these are the services which have some local transactions with their own with their own database and each local transaction update the database and publish the event for the next service so when when the transaction process has initiated this service has completed a task and updated the data in in its own database after completing the task it has emitted emitted the message for the next service and service 2 is also doing its task and completing the same thing uh, whatever it needed to do complete the transaction and further it is emitting the emitting the event for the next service in the queue and if any of the local transaction fails then saga publishes a compensating transaction to all the services which have performed the commit so it is the same step that service to if it is service to is failing then service again it is going to emit a message for the service to sir, previous service to revert the transaction so the messages that it is emitting we are saying that as compensating transactions when it comes to saga there are different kinds of transactions different types of transactions that we should understand so first type kind of transaction it is a compensable transactions that I have, we have just understood are transactions that can potentially be reversed by processing another transaction with the opposite effect and the second type is a pivot transaction it is a go or no go point in a saga so if it is whether it is done or it is not done there is no midway if the pivot transaction commits the saga runs until completion so when this has started uh, this has started saga will try to complete itself it cannot revert in it cannot stop stop in between so a pivot transaction can be a transaction that is neither compensable nor retryable we cannot trigger compensable transaction when pivot transaction has started or it can be the last compensable transaction or the first retryable transaction in the saga it cannot be in mid of the transaction process retryable transactions are transactions that follow the pivot transaction and are guaranteed to be succeeded these are the few points about saga and the type of transaction that we have now let's move ahead and see what are the different implementations available under saga so there are two strategies under saga first is the choreography and second is the orchestration that can be used to implement the saga pattern let's go ahead and see one by one so under choreography this is the client request that is coming and this is the message broker that we have and these are the participants service a service b service c so how it works when the transaction process is started started from the service a all of these services in the transaction communicating through this message broker so when part of the transaction is completed by service a it emits a it emits a message to message broker and service b is listening from the message broker it does that it task it does the part of the service part of the transaction and again it does the same thing publishes a message to message broker which then subsequent service listens and performs its transaction and marks the transaction complete and the same if in in between if any of the any of the services fail to do its task they are going to through they are going to emit a message or i can say a compensable transaction or message to the previous service so all the information is in the message which service specific service is uh, publishing so there can be a side when we are talking about the message there is a concept of q1 or q2 maybe that if the task is completing they are putting the message under q1 and if they are failing they are putting the message under q2 which respective services are listening and do their task properly so this is how choreography works so what are the benefits so it is a good for simple work workflows which have few services to implement the choreography we do not need any additional service implementation and there is no single point of failure so we do not have any central coordinate central coordinator that is why it is easy to implement even if service uh, even if any service is down and if uh, if i say that there is a specific service that is not taking part in the transaction even this service a and service c can complete that transaction so there is no single point of failure and no additional service to start this process of the transaction 
there is some drawbacks of this it can be confusing when adding new steps so when you have predefined three services it's okay but when you are adding new services to the transaction to complete that transaction that might be difficult cyclical dependency can occur so when service a is emitting a message so it can be possibility that it message has arrived to service b and they when service b is emitting a message service c is supposed to listen that but service a has listened that one so this way we can say that there is a cycle so cyclic cyclic dependency risk is there integration testing is difficult why is this so because to complete the transaction testing all of the services involved must be running at the time of testing so that's all about the choreography next move ahead and see the next pattern that we have orchestration pattern so this is how it works so there is orchestrator orchestrator means we can say there is a, some kind of coordinator that is available to coordinate the transaction steps among all the services so this is the client request which has initiated the transaction and now this coordination is coordinate this coordinator is going to maintain the going to keep the log and going to keep the record of the transaction and will coordinate with all other services so it is it is passing a message to service a to complete its task same it is passing the service b it is same it is passing to the service c and at any point if something is failing it is going to orchestrator is going to pass the message to revert that transaction that previous services has completed so there are some benefits of this it is good for complex workflows which have many services and new services can be added it at any time by adding that logic in the orchestrator so service services has nothing to do with that we just have to add the logic in the orchestrator or coordinator and the new service will be ready to take part in the transaction it is suitable when there is a control over all the participants and control over the flow of activities and there is no risk of the cyclic de cyclic dependency clear separation of concern because it they are the orchestrator logic is now separate from the business logic now and this coordinator that we have orchestrator it is a different service altogether to manage the transaction right so now we do not have to write the transaction in specific logic in specific services that what messages they need to emit now that responsibility has been taken care by the coordinator so all the services are free from there so we have clear separation of concern there is some drawback so we can say there some design complexity is there and additional point of failure that comes with this new service which is the coordinator and this is the one example one real time example that i am taking here so this is the order service and there is some terms that has coming into picture so when we go deep into the implementation these things are coming into picture so first is the saga log which is going to keep record of every step that needs to be performed in the transaction and saga log is going to help take help from the saga execution coordinator which in short we say sec which is actually going to request the individual service which is taking part in the transaction so uh, now let's see how this is the process is starts so order service has initiated the transaction by requesting saga log so saga log starts the saga process here start the saga and the saga execution coordinator starts sending the request so first it is sending the request to request one and if the task is completed properly by the history service and it has responded with the success it subsequently passes the message to saga log so saga log has updated the record that request one is complete and the second same thing is followed with the mailing service saga log ask saga coordinator to ask the mailing service to do the its task so mailing service does a task and acknowledges by the request to saga execution coordinator and subsequently request to is updated in the saga log the same thing is performed with the analytic service and when it is success means all of the request has completed successfully saga execution coordinator marks the end of the saga by maintaining the entry in the saga log and saga log then informs the order service that this has been completed properly so this is the happy scenario that we have now let's see what about the failure scenario that we have so we have this start saga and suppose history service has processed the request completely and saga log got, got the response for that coming to the mailing service 
request to when it was a saga execution coordinator when asked the mailing service to do a task so it failed to perform that task means mailing sir at request is failing at the point of mailing service what is next as per the process of the saga now we have to revert the all the tasks that has been happened in the previous service and in this example we have this history service which has completed the task now i have to initiate the compensating transaction so that is here so we have saga log has initiated the compensation compensation request here with the history service which is going to revert the task that has been completed at this request one point right now analytics service is not going to get any request from there because the transaction is terminated now by by completing this compensation request so compensation request depends suppose it was the uh, there are two services which have completed the task and the third service is failing so there will be two compensation request for both the previous services to revert that transaction and now after this compensation request ends so that marks the end of the saga so i hope the picture is now clear now that's all about the saga pattern in the database design pattern so now let's end this video with the this last slide that we have went to use saga so when we have to ensure data consistency in distributed system without tight coupling roll back if one of the operation of in the sequence fails so this things is self explanatory that we have understood so far so it is less suitable when we have tightly coupled transaction and when compensating transaction that occur in earlier participants and when we have cyclic dependency so that's all i have about saga if still you have any confusion and any doubt put that in comment section we can work on that to resolve that confusion if you want to understand more about that this is the link that you can go ahead and check out that so what is next that we are going to cover so this was all about database pattern that we have covering we have been covering from uh, last few videos i'm going to summarize that in the next video and then we will move further so if you want to get the list of all the topics in this series go ahead and check out this link if you like the content please don't forget to like share subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you get notification about every upload on the channel i'll see you in the next video till then take care stay safe bye bye